Hello there everyone. Today we're going to look at a new script we've made available that allows you to read in a file with some trading signals and then execute those trading signals through CloudQuant. Um, it's in light mode so what we're going to do is trigger it every minute and submit the orders every minute but if you're an elite user you could very simply change this to triggering on trade and you'd get a much finer resolution for your order so what we want to do is go to scripts and go to public scripts and then under example you will find read and execute trade file so as we can see, it's quite a short little script. Uh, it's not doing a huge amount of uh, complicated things. It's going to read in a file into a dictionary and uh, generate a list of symbols that would be trading today from that file. And then it's going to qualify those symbols or any symbols that we're currently in a position for if we were doing a multi-day trade. And then every minute, it's going to check through that signal file and see whether or not uh, the trade for the current symbol is there at the current time in the current minute and if it is then it will send an order for that so um, it does require obviously you to make a file filled with symbols now there's two ways to do that uh, the first is simply to go to user data and create a file and then we type in a name here signals dot csv and generate the file and then we could type the symbols in here but what we're going to do on this occasion is going to upload a file instead. So you click upload and you can click on choose a file. And I've already created a file called signals.csv and it simply contains symbol, timestamp, quantity, side, order type and price. So each line is a different order. Google at 9.35, a market order, buy 100 shares. Apple at 9.40, 200 shares, buy market order. Apple. Uh, 200 shares at 10 o'clock sell limit and then a limit price so obviously with a market order you don't need a price with a limit order you would need a price and then Google sell market order at 10 or 2 uh, so that's the file and this is the file so we'll just select it and upload the file and there you go we've now got it in CloudQuant we've got a file over here called signals.csv if we were to jump to a different file and jump back to signals we can see there's the file so going back to the scripts and the data that I'm using is uh, encapsulated within the script. You can just copy the text out of the bottom here and put it into your own file if you want to test it using the same data. And so these are obviously on 2019, January 11th. So we're going to clone this script. That's the first thing we do with anything that's in public scripts. We click clone script. It puts the word clone on the end of the file. Uh, we don't actually need that. We'll take that off and we'll just save it into our own folder with the normal name we'll click save we can see the back test date is january 11th 2019 we'll click new test and we're just going to run from 9 30 to 10 15 here because as you saw in the signals file that was all they were if you were running a whole day you would run core hours um, but we'll just do it on this for now so the back test has been submitted we go to the results tab and we click on the back test that we're interested in uh, we don't need to see the chart so we can minimize that this is the back test it's running at the moment and we'll just wait for this to finish so it's warning us here that because we're running in cloud quant light uh, the on fill function that we have in the script will not be called um, if you're an elite user and you run it then you will see the fills come in but let's click on the back test and we can see that it scanned through the file and found four signals to trade and then in turn it sent out an order for Google, an order for Apple, another order for Apple to sell, and another order for Google to sell. And if we go to the close trades tab, we can see that Apple we got in at 9.40 and got out at 10.03, and Google we got in at 9.35 and got out at 10.02. That's it, we'll go back to the script and have a, a look line by line as to what it is that it's actually doing. So an important thing here is we're importing a library called PYTZ. This library helps do conversions of times to UTC times the system uses UTC times so we just need to do a conversion and obviously when we're reading in the file uh, we're just reading in a string of characters for the date so we need to do some conversion of that so first thing we do is from the system time from service.system time we do a conversion to convert it back to a date time format which is used by Python 
We then read in our data file, signals.csv. We set up two blank dictionaries. One is going to contain the signals where the date matches with today's date, and the other will contain the list of symbols. So we step through the file line by line for signal in data, data being the file that we read in, signal being a single line. Um, we print the signal to the screens, which we saw in the back test that we ran. And then we pull the signal timestamp out. We tell the system what format we expect to see it in, and we ask it to convert that to a date time format within Python. And then we check to see if the date that we got from the backtesting system is the same as the date that we just got from the line that we read out of the file, then we will do some more conversion. So the next thing we do is we do the conversion for the time zone, uh, localize it to New York time, and then we get the UTC time out of it. You don't need to worry too much about these lines. You can do some more research online if you want to know what's going on, but um, suffice to say that it's, it's simply fixing, pulling in the time string and fixing it so that it works with the system. Then what we do is we'll store that converted time in with the data that we've pulled in from the file. Then we'll put that into a class variable, a class variable being a variable that can be referenced by different callbacks, this one and this one and this one, and any callback that you have, a class can be uh, seen across all of them. And then we'll make um, an addition of the symbol to our symbol list. And the reason we do that is because the next step we're going to take, we loop through that until we've read in all of the data from the file. The next step that we take is to tell the system what symbols we actually want to run the backtest on. For today. So we're going to run it for any symbols that are in the symbol list. And then I've added this on for those of you who might want to change this script to use it for a multi-day backtest. You can also qualify any symbols where you're currently in a position. The next step is um, every minute in, we will be called back by on minute bar. So this, what the system will do is every time any of the symbols that we told it we wanted to run for Every time each one of those symbols gets a new minute, it will call this on minute bar function. And so at that point, we'll grab the current time. We will step through our signal file and we will get the trade time for each signal. And we will compare the symbol that we've just got with the current symbol that we're on. If it matches, then we'll compare the hour with the current system hour, so the trade time hour with the current system hour, and then we will compare the minute, the trade time minute with the current system minute. If they are the same, then we will send our order using all of the variables that we pull from that dictionary. And we'll do a little print statement to print it out on the screen. And if you're running under CloudQuant Elite and you uncheck the fast mode, it will also call this on fill event when that trade gets filled. So that's all there is to it. That's the entire script. Now, obviously, this is not sophisticated enough to do market on close orders, or it doesn't do any checking to make sure if you submit a limit order that that limit order has been filled before maybe trying to submit another order. But it's simply a demonstration of reading in a signals file, uh, putting that signals file into a database, converting the string of the date and time into a system date and time, and then qualifying those symbols that are in that file, and step-by-step, minute-by-minute, making those trades. Uh, so I hope this has been useful for you. Um, by all means, give us feedback either on the YouTube video or in the forums at cloudquant.com, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.